In this video, I'll be explaining to you two concepts with the help of four different examples. And the concepts are scope and shadowing in Rust. So let's get started with our first example. So here I've created a new project using Cargo. In the first video of the series, I'd shown you how to create a new Cargo project by Cargo New and whatever the name of the project. And you get an SRC and main file. So whatever was there in the main file, I've removed all of that. And now I'll start creating my program. So we'll have our fun fn main or uh, just like in Golang, you have function main. Here you have fn main. And you always have to put these two round brackets there, okay, uh, in front of any function definition. And then you define the function with these uh, curly braces. So here I will be taking a variable called x and it will be a 32 bit integer. And let's say the value of this is 10, okay. Now I'll create these two curly braces that this can define a particular uh, code block. So just like in Golang, just like in JavaScript, you have your code blocks where you can define different code in that. Here you can, in, in Rust also, you have the same concept. So here, let me define a new, a different variable, which is again i32, and the value of this can be 15. And here I'll say print ln, and we'll say the value of x is and the value of y is. Now you'll um, see these curly braces here. This is just like in Golang, you have percentage %v, percentage %s, those kind of things, right? Just to be able to print whatever the value with the reference, the value of x and y, you're able to do that same thing here in uh, Rust as well. And here all you have to say is x, comma x and comma y and Rust will be able to automatically determine that uh, out here you want to put the value of x and out here you want to put the value of y. Okay, so just want to show you this little feature as well. And outside this code block, outside this code block, we'll again copy and paste this line. We'll put it here and we'll say the same thing. The value of x is this and the value of y is this. Okay, now what do you think should happen? So let's run it, but just try and, you know, guess what's going to happen. Let's come to uh, the program and let's say clear because I was just trying out the program before. And here we'll say um, cargo run. Okay, so it says cannot find value y in the scope. So this is a code block and you've defined y in this code block. So the value of y will be easily accessible in this code block here. But outside the value of y, uh, Rust does not know what the value of y outside is. So the value of y is only restricted between these two brackets. So that's the problem here. If you were to take this and define y for this entire function and not just for that code block, you would be able to print the value of x and y both later on as well. So let's go and try and run it and see what happens. So here it does not give you an error. It says running and it shows you the value of x is 10, value of y is 15. Similarly, so uh, value of x is y and y is 15. So now, I hope you understand that you can create specific code blocks, right? You can also write uh, this character, uh, these these two curly braces here to print out the values of x and y uh, out here. Just like in Golang, you have like percentage %v, percentage %s, all of those things, percentage %d and all of that. Similarly, you can do that out here, but in a much simpler way. And uh, you have scope of variables. So if um, this variable is defined for the duration or the extent of only this code block, then only uh, that variable will be accessible only there, not outside. So there's a specific strict control of scope in all of Rust. And um, now we'll take the example of a, of a different function and we'll see how scope works in different functions. So we have just seen how scope works in a single function. But what if we had multiple functions? So now let's take an example of two different functions and let's look at scope from a different light. So let me first create my main function. In my main function, I'm going to say print ln. And here, I'll create these two round brackets. And inside that, I'll put double quotes. And I'll write these curly brackets. And I'll say comma word. And here, outside, I'll say comma x. So what I'm telling uh, Rust to do is, I'm telling Rust to uh, print out the value of x out here, along with comma and word. So we just saw what this means, right? And this is basically going to print out the value of x out here, and then we'll have world. Now I'll create another function called define underscore x. And here 
we'll define the value of x. We'll say x is equal to hello. So now what do you think should happen? If we run this program, what do you think should happen out here? So let's uh, try, and, like, try and guess it, and let's actually go and see what happens. So here I'm going to go ahead and clear this uh, terminal, and I'm going to say cargo run. So here it says expected one of this or this. Okay, so here the issue is something else, right? Because we have not put these two round brackets. So uh, Rust is also telling you about the syntax, which is amazing. And now we'll come back here and we'll say cargo run. And here it says not found in the scope. So it does not um, know what the value of x is. So it does not recognize the value of x. Uh, even though we have defined it in this function, uh, main function does not know the value of x. And what's happening here is that in that function, when you define the value of variable, the scope of that variable only is only restricted to that function. It cannot be accessed by other functions, right? So this is very important to remember. Something like, you know, obviously this, this is what happens with Golang and this is what happens with C programming language. This is what also happens with Rust. So if you are from those backgrounds, you would understand this really well. Uh, now, how do you fix that? So the way to fix it is that you can cut this line, bring it here, and here from main function, just call the function define underscore x. So when you call this function, I know we have not understood functions, we have not talked about functions yet, we'll be digging down into functions very soon. But um, if, if you have any programming, basic programming knowledge from other programming languages, I just, uh, you know, I request you to kind of use that here for a while in, in understanding functions. I know we have not done them. We will be doing them very soon. But just uh, understand what's happening here. So function uh, is being called here, define x. And <clears throat> in that function, there will be a value of x is equal to hello. And then you'll print out hello, comma, word, because the value of x is hello. Okay, and now it should work because we're just calling this function from our main function. We're not, you know, just trying to print the value of x. And the value of x and pr the printing of x are both happening in the defined function. In case you have no experience about what functions are, functions are basically, uh, you know, elements available to us, elements or, uh, you know, features available to us in a programming language where you can reuse code quite a bit. So if I had to, uh, you know, repeat things again and again, I could have different functions and I could, you know, have again, different functions for different things as well. Uh, don't worry about it. We'll learn deeper about functions in a while. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try and run this program and see what happens. So cargo run and um, everything works perfectly. You get hello world. So this was the way to solve that little issue that we were having. Okay, so just remember, if you have a variable in a particular function, um, there is no way another function would be able to have access to it because this is how scopes are restricted in Rust. Now let's take the example, two more examples. Let's try and understand how shadowing works. So shadowing is a different feature. Let's uh, get into that. Before we look at those examples, it's important to understand what shadowing even is. So let me define uh, a function, let me create a function called main. And in our main function, I'll define the value of x as 32 bit integer, the value is four. Now, I can, if I try to change the value of x to uh, some text, this should ideally give me an issue. So I'll say these two curly brackets, and, and, and I'll say is the value of x, sorry for the typo, and I'll put a comma x so that it basically prints out the value of x. Okay, so now when you run this program, I say cargo run, it gives me an error, right? That obviously you can't uh, take a variable and then you know change the value. And for this, we had mutation, we had mutability. This is what we saw in the previous video, and when you do this. Then again, it's a problem because it's a mismatched type because earlier it was integer and now it's text. But what if what if you wanted to uh, completely overwrite this value? You wanted to overwrite the value of x. So you could say, let x is equal to some text. And now, now what do you think will happen? Now let's try and run this program and see what happens. You should get an error, right? But you don't get an error, you just get a warning. So what's happening here is um, it's it's and you just get a warning, but also the program compiles and you see the output. You see the actual output. Um, it's finishing. Yeah, it says some text is the value of x, which was this variable out here. So what's happening out here is that you had 
uh, define declared x and then you again uh, define the value of x with the help of let. So when you do that, when you use let, then Rust understands that you know what you're doing and it completely uh, rewrites the value of x and this is called as shadowing. Now um, the warning that you get, if you look at the warning that you get, you see it says unused variable x, which is the first variable, the first variable that you define with x1 uh, i32, which is 4, the integer. This one is uh, not being recognized by Rust. It says that you had defined this variable, but you never end up, ended up using it. Now what, what's happening here is that uh, Rust is only recognizing this variable because this was the one that was defined and this was the one that was and used. So Rust is saying that even though this is x, you had defined it, never ended up using it, and I'm not considering this to be the same x. It's a different x altogether. This is why I'll give you a warning for unused variable of x. So I hope this makes sense. So if you add, if you add let, then there is no problem. Then you can completely rewrite the value. But if you remove let, then it becomes a problem. Even if you add up mute here, mutable, it's still a problem because the uh, types are completely different. So I hope uh, shadowing is understood now. Shadowing basically is rewriting when you write let in front of the variable again. Now let's take our first example. So I'll say function main. I'll say let x, which is i32, equal to 5. And then here I'll create my code blocks. I'll say x is equal to 12, assert underscore equal to x, comma 5. And I'll say assert underscore equal to x, comma 12. And then I'll say let x is equal to 42, print ln, comma, x. Okay. So now what do you think should happen? Try and guess it. We'll run the program and, uh, you know, the earlier the value of i, as you can see, or the value of x, as you can see, is 5. And then the value of x inside that bracket becomes equal to 12. But uh, we're trying to assert the value of x with 5 because, you know, the value of x, which is the global variable x, as you can see, for uh, main, will that be prioritized or the value of x, which is 12, will that be prioritized? So what do you think? The value of x, which is 5, will be prioritized or the value of x, which is 12, will that be prioritized? So what do you think? Should uh, x be equal to? And then outside the block, again, I've said assert uh, equal x with 12. So now, because the value of x has changed uh, to 12, should it be uh, 12 now? Because we're still using let, right? As you remember, when you use let, you are able to rewrite uh, the value of x, the value of the variable. So here, because the value of uh, x is changing to 12, should it be equal to 12? Should it be equal to 5? What should be the errors here? Or, or should it run? Should it give us an output of 42? Let's see. Let's see what happens. So here we'll say cargo run. And as you can see it, you get an error. Okay, so uh, assertion failed. Left is equal to right, the assertion failed at line five. So already we have an issue. This means that x should have been equal to, if x is equal to, then there should be an, shouldn't be an issue. So let's see what happens. Okay, again, um, you do get some error with assertion failed. That means out here, let's try the value of five. And now run it. Right, so this example that I'm showing you, um, so this runs perfectly. This example that I'm showing you is kind of important to understand how even with shadowing, the scope still holds. So when you have x, the value of x is five. Uh, in this code block, the value of x has become 12, but that is only limited to that just that code block. It does not affect the value of x outside that code block. So inside that this code block, when we try to equate the value of x with 12, this will work because the value of x is 12 now in this code block. But outside, the value of x still remains to be 5 in the sense that Drust does not acknowledge this completely. It says that, you know, I, I did not read this. I don't know what happened here. And outside that, x will always be 5. 
So when you equate that with five, everything is perfect. No errors. So no errors are created here. And then when you again uh, outside in the outside scope, when you create the change the value of x to 42, you are able to print it because of obviously because of shadowing because you know change the value here, uh, initialize the value here, change it here, and this change does not reflect because it was inside another scope of code block. So I hope this is clear. So in this example, this little example, which is important, you've seen how scope and shadowing are both working uh, together. Now we have one more example and uh, we'll be able to understand shadowing a little more uh, you know, in detail. So now we have uh, an interesting example. I'll start again with function main and I'll create a mutable x, which is again i32 is equal to one and I'll say x is equal to seven. Then I'll define, I'll say again, let x is equal to four, which is shadowing. Remember when you put let becomes shadowing. Then, and you try to say x plus is equal to three. And then you'll say print ln success. Okay. Now let's try running this program. Okay, so I'll open up my terminal and I'll say, cargo run and you can see I get a lot of warnings and errors and blah 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 blah. Let's try to understand what's happening here first. <clears throat> so I create a variable called x, it's i32, but it's mutable, right? So if I define the value to be one um, and if I change that value without writing let in front of it, where if I just directly change the value, since it's mutable, Rust does not have a problem. We've already seen that in the previous video, that mutability, uh, you know, can be easily uh, achieved if you just write mut in front of a variable. So that means when you're changing the value of x from one to seven now, since it's mutable, not a problem. X uh, Rust is completely fine with that. Then what happens is we end up um, using shadowing and completely change or rewriting the value of x. And now, so this, uh, all of this for Rust, it's like, you know, it doesn't even uh, exist because now the new value of x is four. And then what happens is this line is a problem. What's, what's happening here is that you now try to change the value of x. Whereas x was mutable, now when you rewrite the value of x, it's not mutable anymore. So when you try to change the value of x, it's an error. So when you try to, re when you remove this line, when you run the program again, now you just see a little bit of warnings, you don't see any error, right? Because you'll see warnings obviously because of unused variable x, because you know we know that since these two, um, now Rust is not recognizing them, Rust is only recognizing this one. So these two, obviously, this will be um, you know, an unused variable. So we can expect those warnings, but there was no error. It finished uh, running and said success, whatever my wrong spelling of success was, it looks a success. So now this little topic, this little thing that we just saw right now can be really confusing to people because uh, you know, because of shadowing. Now, when you shadow it, you completely change or rewrite the value. It's not mutable anymore when you had defined it as to be mutable. So people think that uh, as a newcomers to Rust think that when if I had defined X to be mutable, then even when I rewrite it with shadowing, it still is in, it still is mutable, but that's not the case. Rust is completely, completely considering a new thing called X, a new variable called X, right? It's completely forgetting about the old variable. So I hope uh, with these examples, I was able to show you uh, what is very difficult to explain otherwise. So you might see other Rust tutorials, they will try to explain this topic to you, uh, this concept to you, but I just want to show it to you with examples so that when we build bigger and bigger projects, these are the small things that can be your Achilles heel or you can, or these can be your small weaknesses or uh, trouble areas, which will create a lot of errors and issues. And uh, I'm trying to kind of build your, um, you know, concepts and fundamentals from a very strong basic level. Uh, so I hope you're able to understand this and I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, I'll keep continuing my Golang uh, tutorials. I've, I'm not, I've not been getting much time. Uh, I will be continuing them uh, very soon. So that'll be going on parallelly. So you don't have to worry about it. Start learning Rust also along with me, uh, you know, like from me basically is what I mean. So um, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.